All right, welcome back to Miniatures 101 with Mark Hunter Photography. Okay, so we think we got a good picture of our bolt action uh, British Para miniature. We're now gonna go with a Catalyst Games battle mech on a plinth. So we're going to start where we were with the bolt action miniature and make some changes. I've adjusted my tripod to be a little higher. We're not gonna worry about the whole plinth. We just wanna get this top part of the plinth. Now let's see where we are. Right now, I've got my camera set back into P mode again for a professional. And it is telling us that we're at 2.8 and we're one sixth of a second. But again, we're two stops over because of whatever setting is on here. So let's go and set our manual at one sixth and 2.8 as a starting point. Okay, so we're two stops too bright because of whatever's happening in my menu. We want to now stop down two stops on that shutter speed. So from 1 6th, we go to 1 12th, or 1 13th, which is the closest. Then we'll try to go up to 1 26th. 1 25th is the closest. We're going to do some rounding on some of this stuff. 1 25th, we went from 1 6th to 1 25th. We are now cutting four times more light from the image. So the image is now four times darker but we've got our exposure right. So at f2.08, we know from experience, having just worked with this bolt action miniature, that there's no way that this thing is going to be in focus. So we're gonna go straight to f8. Now from f2.8 to f8 is from two to four, one stop, four to 5.6, two stops, 5.6 to eight is three stops of light that we have just lost. We have stopped down three stops. So now we need to stop up three stops on the shutter speed, because again, we're gonna leave ISO alone as much as possible. So to stop up, we need to add light. So now we're gonna go back to 1 13th for one stop, 1 6th for another stop. We're gonna to go to 3 tenths of a second, which is, which is three stops now brighter than 1 25th. Now let's take a look. Now the exposure is good. We'll do a depth of field look. Our, back, our background is going to be a little brighter. It looks like the whole ruler may be more in focus. Now note, I have not changed the distance of the camera. I think the mech is standing about the same distance away as the bolt action miniature, but let's take a picture. Now you notice there's a little bit of a pause there. We're going to get to that here in a minute. Hey, that looks pretty sharp. What do you think? So the type on this backdrop is a little small. It is, uh, and it's also a little blurry because of the print, the way the printing was done. But the miniature actually looks pretty sharp here. I think we may have this really quick. At F8, a third of a second, and ISO 100, it's pretty sharp. Let's just go ahead and go down here. The plinth is looking sharp. Notice the ruler. Now I can't go any further down on this image, but remember the front of that ruler is at the two millimeter mark. And everything we see here all the way back to probably the 75 millimeter mark is really sharp. And when I look at the model, the 75 millimeter mark comes right at the back edge of the wooden block of the plinth. So I think we're pretty good. We could actually call this shot done just that quick. I'm not a fan of the bright light in the background. With this miniature, it's not that big of a deal though because we've got a background for the miniature, but how could we, how could we stop the light from hitting the background and make it a little darker, help this miniature pop out? This is a great time to experiment. So we're gonna take the ruler off, we know it's good. We're gonna find something to go between the light and the background. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can be just about anything. Okay, to try to get the light off the background, what we're doing is we're putting flags up, basically. A flag is anything you're wanting to put in front of the light. And you'll notice behind the miniature, it's getting a little darker. The rest of that light is coming from the lights overhead. So let's turn off my studio lights. It just so happens that almost immediately above my table, just above and to the left, 
uh, I have a can light in the ceiling that is lighting up that backdrop. If I turn it off, it gets a little better. Let's take a picture. Take a look at the picture. You know, I'm getting some shadow on the miniature. I lowered my light for the paratrooper to make sure his the shadows under his helmet didn't come across his eyes because that wasn't painted on its actual shadows. I need to lift this light a little bit. Now we have good light on the model. Let's go ahead and take a picture. Let's zoom in. It's a little bit bright on uh, the back on his backdrop, actually the the blueprints. Everything else is still looking good. That's not bad. Now we're still getting a little bit of light at the top uh, in the background. Okay, so I figured it out. Okay, so my my flags are doing their job. The problem is, is that I also have a light here other than my room lights to make sure I'm well lit for the other camera. That's in the way. We don't want to turn that light off though. So if we move this back, notice how that light in the back is changing as I push this box back. Now it's not just blocking the main light, it's now also blocking the, the uh, light that I'm using to light up the rest of the studio. So let's go ahead and take another picture. We're very, very close. That looks pretty good. I'm not entirely crazy about the brightness on the on on this uh, blueprint, and it does look slightly out of focus. I think it's just right there. This is what we do here. We're going to go in. We're going to go ahead and step up on this one to f11, and I want you to watch what happens to the brightness in the background. It's a little darker. Now, because we went down a stop, what do we want to do? We, want, we went down a stop and made the image one stop darker. We want to stop up on the shutter speed, slowing the shutter down to allow more light in. That should be about a sixth of a second. There we go, right on target. Now, let's take that picture. Notice that's a little sharper. Look at the difference. I, gave, I changed one stop on my aperture, compensated for it with the shutter speed, and now my blueprint is actually sharper. So this is the first shot. Look at that print. Sharper, a lot sharper. Do what you need to do to get the look you want, and I want this to stand out on a black backdrop. So the problem here is that my backdrop isn't a true black. It's actually sort of a wood panel look. So I have found a box that is black. All right, so we're gonna put this black box back here. Put it right up against our backdrop. You can already see a difference there. Before we take this picture, we wanna do one other thing. Because we're at such a slow shutter speed, Hitting the shutter button on the camera introduces a little bit of camera shake. We want to get rid of that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to change our drive mode. The drive mode, in this case, uh, the highlighted area, that means that it's going to take multiple pictures as long as I hold the button down. What I want is a self timer. We're just going to go with a two second timer because that two seconds is going to be enough for the camera to settle down. So let's take a picture. It's going to take two seconds for the shutter to go off, and then it's going to take a sixth of a second to actually take the picture. Here we go. Now you can see the light reflecting off the box from the little light that tells you the timer is going. That won't show up in the picture. Now we go in here. This is pretty sharp. You can almost read the text on the blueprint. Everything looks sharp. The background is nice and dark, and it's nice and dark all the way down. I think this one is really good. Okay, so there's we, we have everything in the picture the way we want it. There's one other thing we want to do before we take the final shot. I'm going to get a little set up a little stand for the white ball card. 
what do we want? We don't want any glare. I don't see any glare on the white or the black of the card. The gray balance should be good. Let's take a picture. Now we're going to remove the Weibull card. We could, because we didn't change anything, we changed absolutely nothing. That last picture was just good. We can go ahead and use that with that card, but let's go ahead and take one more picture just to be on the safe side. So now we've got a final picture that we can color balance with this picture, or we can do it with the picture before. So we've got two good pictures and a Weibull card. This one is ready for editing. We forgot to look at this histogram. Now, to be honest, I usually do not refer to the histogram while I'm shooting like this. Um, after a while, you develop a sense for what it's doing, but it can be very helpful, and I probably should have taken a look at this. But you can see that uh, we're not quite as dark as we could be, but we are also not touching on the white side. This is actually a pretty nice looking curve for an image, especially since we didn't even refer to it. Another way to describe the histogram here is every little dot on this histogram is a pixel on the sensor. It's one piece of the information in the image, and all it's doing is stacking up all the darker squares over on the left, all the brighter squares over on the right. And the chart can go as high as it needs to. We don't worry too much about the clipping at the top. All that means is that there are so many darker pixels in this image that we are capping out at what the histogram will read, but we're not losing any information. We only lose information on the far left or the far right. And given what we're shooting and how dark it is, we're fine with this as it is. We're going to trade the rifleman out for something a little more challenging. Now, remember that this is about a two inch deep plinth. We're going to look now at something that we'll need a lot more depth of field. Sigvald. This particular model is a great chance for a quick segue. I did not paint this model. This was painted by Luca of Miniatures Den on Twitch. If you enjoy painting stream or just fun conversation, go check him out. This particular model is more dynamically posed than our previous models. The base itself is 240 millimeters from front to back. The sword extends off the edge, and so does the cloak. Uh, and the shield is rather far forward on the base as well. So we are going to have a challenge with our depth of field. So we've got the model set, we've adjusted the camera, we've adjusted the light a little bit here. Now what we want to do is try to find our settings. My default is to always start at f8. And to get a good exposure, that means we need uh, we need a four tenths of a second exposure. Let's go ahead and take a picture and see how that comes out. He's in pretty good focus on the face, which is good. The sword is uh, pretty well in focus. I'm, I'm seeing a little bit of a loss of sharpness towards the end of the blade. The base is looking pretty good. But notice that cloak. Notice the difference in sharpness between the horns and the cloak. Now, stylistically, I kind of like that. You want that separation uh, that you get from the head to the cloak to help bring that model out. But if we're trying to get the entire miniature in focus, then what we need to do is change a few things. For a start, what we're going to do is we're going to change our aperture and go up to f11 to get a little deeper depth of field. Now notice that we've lost the stop of light because we've dropped down the aperture. So we're going to step up the shutter speed by slowing it down. So now instead of a fourth of a second, we're at an eighth of a second. That will bring in twice as much light. Let's take another shot. Let's focus on, you can tell that, that it is way out of focus. The next step since F11 doesn't quite work, is we want to increase the distance between the camera and the model. The further the camera is from the subject, the wider the depth of field. So we're just gonna move the camera back. Let's move it back about two feet. And we're just gonna eyeball it. All 
Okay, so we've moved the camera back about two feet from the model. Now we should have better depth of field. So we're not going to change anything. We're going to start with F, uh, with the 8 tenths of a second and F11 and take another picture. And here is Sigvald. Look at that. The cloak is nice and sharp. The base is sharp in the front. Everything on the base is sharp. And there's a nice sharp sword. That was pretty easy. So to just recap how we did that, it, when our depth of field was too shallow and the tip of the sword was blurred and the back of the cloak was blurred, without changing anything else about our, our exposure, we moved the camera back about two feet. Now we did look like we were a little off. Notice the exposure got a third off. This histogram is interesting because as we move the camera back, we added more white to the image coming from that bar at the front of my photo table. So we're actually pushing the whites. You can actually see there's a line right up against the right hand side. Now, typically that would bother me. I'd want to change the histogram just for that. But I know that the part of the picture I'm looking at, just that middle part with Sigvald is what I'm after. That white bar is not going to be in there. And once I crop that out, this histogram is going to change. However, let's take a look at where our shadows are. On the far left, I am almost missing that entire section of the darkest tones in the image. That means that we've overexposed. We want that curve to be about where it is, but we would prefer it to be a little further to the left. So remember we were off by a third stop. Let's correct that. We're just going to stop down our shutter speed by a third. So now we're at six tenths of a second. We're just trying to get that meter in the middle. We'll take another shot. Two second timer to avoid the camera shake. Go back in here. There's our new histogram. There's the old one. You can see that shift to the left. If you look at the back of the table, you'll notice the background darkens. We like the background being darker. We're still getting a lot of whites from that front end. So what can we do about that? In this case, we know that the histogram is kind of lying to us about the part of the picture we're after, and we're not gonna do the crop in camera, but we can do a little trick. We're gonna slide something in the front there to break down uh, the white a little bit. I've just slid something that's black on top of that line. Now let's look at what happens. Two second delay to avoid camera shake. Now look what has happened. Look at the right side of the histogram. It has changed quite a bit. We removed all the white from that handle. We're still getting a little bit of bright colors. That's coming off of the edge uh, there in the sort of the mint green in the lower right corner is registering as a brighter color. That's a nice sharp picture still, isn't it? And if we scroll down here, that's still sharp. Everything, we've got a nice sharp image here. Histogram is still a little bright. Let's do one more trick. Let's take our shutter speed. We're going to go ahead and stop down on the shutter speed to four tenths of a second without changing anything else. Two second delay for shake. Open the picture up. See what has happened to that curve? Let's go back and look at the last picture. Then there's this picture. It's significantly darker and we've lost a lot of the white. The blacks are near the left edge, but are not actually there. So our shadows are good. And I keep saying white and black, and that's a misnomer. This is measuring the brightness of the color. So the left-hand side is our dark side, and our right-hand side is our light side. But this is the curve we're looking for. Yes, we've got a lot of information in the dark section and the mid-tones, uh, or our, darks, our darker section and our shadows. But that's okay because we're trying to shoot on a black background or a, a darker background. So this is pretty good. And if we zoom in on our image, the cloak is in focus. It can maybe be a little sharper, but I'm okay with this. This looks pretty good. That is a, that is a, a decent exposure. Okay, but we also wanna make sure that it stays a decent exposure, right? So there's another step we wanna take. 
to help us get our colors right when we do the post-processing. Here's our Hawaii ball card. I'm gonna put it about even with the front of the base. It's in the picture. We're checking for glare and it, we don't appear to have any glare off of the white or the black part uh, and the gray part looks good. So we're gonna take that picture. So now we can take this picture. We haven't changed anything, so we could go back and use it to adjust this picture, which we'll probably do on this one. Um, now, if we look back now at the histogram, with the, with the white balance card in the image, let's look at the, what happens to the histogram here. There's the previous image. That histogram is almost identical. Notice in the dark tones, it's going to gain a little bit, and in the white tones, it's going to gain a little bit. You see that? That is because the additional information of the white card has added a lot of mid-tone with that gray. That 18% gray is helping balance this picture out. We've got a little bit of black, a little bit of white from the sticker. But the mid-tones have a, have a small jump as well because of that gray. So there you have it. We've got a good picture of Sigval. We went with F11. Uh, we adjusted the shutter speed for the exposure, and then we shifted the camera back about two feet to make sure that the depth of field was going to capture the entire base and his entire cloak in focus. Our next step will be to transfer the files from the camera to the computer and start working on post-processing.